So there's a good buddy of mine named Peter that's been building my engines for years, and the other day he gave me a call asking me about an exhaust system for his truck project. We're working on a 56 truck, a 56 Chevy truck with the alias and the Colgate suspension stuff for uh, alias fits. Yeah, right. And um, I got the motor in, got the gearbox in, got the Colgate variant in, all the old and shock. Uh, ready for the exhaust. Okay. Got the hook and heaters on it. Right. Got all in down and up. I'd like to use the Magna Flow. Magna Flow have a really nice um, year build kit. Okay. With mufflers and everything and all the beans. Stainless steel. Right. Um, it, it's a really neat kit. I'd like to. I'd like to use that if we can get it. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, also, these these make those really trick hangers. Oh yeah. And they also make some band clamps, some big band clamps. I think I better take a trip down to Oceanside and get a hold of my buddy Richard. So our journey begins where the first stop is Oceanside, California, the home of MagnaFlow Exhaust. My name is Richard Waitis and I'm the senior manager here at MagnaFlow and we're here talking about a particular project we're working with and that's Peter's 56 truck. In this case, it's actually a pretty common scenario. We're putting a late model LS motor into a classic chassis and of course with that we want to make sure we support that motor with the appropriate exhaust system. So uh, in this case, so we were working with the guys and we came to the conclusion that our custom builder kit would be the best possible solution. Uh, one of the things that comes as an advantage is obviously we build exhaust systems for every application from the 1930s up. And with that, that gives us a lot of information upon what the average builder is going to need and a kit that they would have to do the same kind of work that we do in-house here on their own. Of course, included the typical things you're going to find with any MagnaFlow exhaust, and that's going to be stainless steel construction, mandrel bent tubing. That means that there's zero distortion in the overall cross section as it passes through the bend. When you have a typical crush bend, which is something that you would find in a um, maybe your average everyday shop that's doing uh, tube bending uh, in a muffler shop, they have to crush and bend that tube, much like if you took a straw that didn't have the little serrations and bends, tried to bend it, you're going to get a kink that kink can cause a dramatic change in airflow up to about 30%. Uh, but we also give you the availability of picking which muffler is going to fit the car best uh, based upon whether you've lowered it, you changed ground clearance, or even gone to an aftermarket or alternate chassis. Uh, in this particular case, we did opt for the two and a half inch dual exhaust. It's, it's typical that we've done all the dyno work inside here to find out that we can support anywhere between 425 and 475 horsepower depending upon the type of aspiration. Big cam cars obviously have very different exhaust needs and sometimes need a more freer flowing exhaust than something that of a late model, kind of carb non-carbureted but uh, emissions minded uh, motor can take. In a lot of cases, a dual two and a half, we've seen support in excess of 500 horsepower with zero loss. Here is the kit that Magnapo sent over to the shop. The kit came with a pair of their stainless steel mufflers, plus enough pipe and a couple of different types of mandrel beams to get the job done right. The first thing we had to do was cut the collector flange off the set of headers that we got from Hooker using the chop saw. We then cut one of the U-bends from the MagnaFlow kit at around the 30 degree mark. Next, we put the set of headers on the engine in the chassis to give me an idea of where I was going to lay out the path of the exhaust. To keep things consistent, I put two pieces of the U-bends together and made a mark where I'd cut from the other side to match the first piece that I cut from the U-bend. Before I made my cut to the other side of the U-bend, I double checked the angle with one of the straight pieces of tubing on the driver's side. With things looking good, I headed back to the chop saw and cut the piece of U-bend tubing to match the first piece that I would cut from the U-bend so they both matched up. Now it was time to lay out the remaining path of the exhaust. With the help of a few jack stands, I set up the straight section of tubing as high as I could in the chassis to make sure the exhaust doesn't get caught on anything while I'm driving the truck. Here's where it gets pretty tricky for one guy to do, as the cut pieces of the U-bend need to line up to where the collector flange was on the header, while staying in line with a straight piece of tubing lined up with the chassis. Once I got them all lined up, I made a few marks with a sharpie pen that will help me keep things lined up when I go to weld them together. 
before I go any further, let's take a look at the V-band and hangers that were sent to us from Deeds Engineering. The nice thing about these, one they're made in the US, right here in California, and the other they put the register in them. So there's a female and male register, so instead of the clamp hanging and wanting to slip and slide and you're relying on the V-band clamp, these actually index. So once you tighten them up, they go back in the same spot for taking the exhaust on and off. So you weld that on your three inch, and out of it comes your two and a half inch pipe, and it's all transitioned inside. It makes another really clean way to go from your collector to your standard exhaust. These are the Deeds hangers. You have a insulated rubber bushing in the top with a couple of little bushings that click in. So to mount them, all you have to do is take a steel bushing, drill and tap it, weld it to the frame, and then you can just bolt this straight to it and your mounting's finished. So it makes it real easy off a cross member or whatever, just to weld in a threaded bung in the right height and your mounting's done. The clamps just loosen off the bottom slide them on, tighten them up, and there's your hanger. Ah, Burbank, California, home to Warner Brothers Studios, where they made some of my favorite cartoon characters come to life. Okay, so I'm heading over to uh, Burbank right now to catch up with a guy named Kevin uh, over at a place called Deeds Engineering. And um, this is a guy that I met at a car show that he had a bunch of different like exhaust clamps and hangers that uh, that I want to use on Peter's project here. Dude, so these are really cool. Like, do you make these here? Yeah, yeah, we make make most everything in house. Really? Yep. How long have you been doing that? About uh, ten years. So you, you worked for your dad for a while and then got into machine work. No, no, actually, uh, I just grew up in an automotive family, and uh, after my first job, I started going to night school and learned how to do this stuff. And just kind of opened up shop. Doing really? This. Yeah. Well, are you making anything right now? Yeah, yeah, we're making some hangers. Oh, really? Yeah. Can you show me? Yeah. Cool. Check it out. All right, here's our uh, our first machine. Okay. Uh, we started the shop with this one. We make all of our exhaust hangers here. Uh, we make them out of solid plate, just like this. Oh, nice. It's all uh, USA made, good materials. Good. And uh, we do start to finish all, all on this machine. Every on that on the machine, huh? Yep, every size, uh, every hanger we make goes through this. So what are you making right now? Oh, we're making hangers, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay, can yeah. you show us how one of them is made? Sure, yeah, here. This is this is probably what you're gonna need right here. Okay. This is a transition V band, so you put this right on your three inch header. Okay. And you'll have two inch exhaust coming out. Oh, so it like reduces. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, rad. Okay. And it's a it's a V band, so you don't need any gaskets. Okay. Uh, self aligning. Uh, take it apart, put it back together, make it nice. Rad. So the thing that you don't fumble around with it, it kind of like locks in place, like a, almost like a Lego. Exactly. Oh, rad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then if you want to get real fancy, you've got. Uh, Two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half. That's right here. Okay. And this is the, just the, the baddest little exhaust thing. Dude, that thing is pretty rad. I mean, they're not joking around. You can do some flawless machine work. There. Yeah, yeah. These are polished. Look like a mirror. Right? Well, that's what I want to do. I want to do something in polish because we're going to probably end up Cerakoting the whole exhaust. Mm -hmm. So that way, the, I want the hangers to kind of stick out. Yeah, yeah. We'll stand out. We'll yeah. Out. Okay, cool. All right. Well, now, what I'm doing in exhaust system. How many of these things, like I'm going from obviously headers all the way back out from tailpipes. How many of these things do you think I should hold? It really depends. Because you're doing a truck, it's a little longer. You might get up to six of them. Okay. Um, you usually want to have them where you have the weight. So where you have the mufflers, where you have the tailpipes. Um, the headers support most of your exhaust system up right. So, but as you get toward the back of the car, toward the muffler, toward the heavy stuff, you want to make sure it's important for one of those. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, man. Let me know what I need. Yeah, I'll get this thing going. All right. So now, I need to weld one of the collar rings to the collector side of the U-band. This will allow me to set the U-band back up to my marks and give me an idea of where the collar ring or the band clamp 
will connect to the straight tubing. With everything looking in place and on my marks, I can tack weld the U-bend piece to the headers in a few spots so that it will not move. Having tack welded the U-bend to the header allows me to remove the header and take it over to the welding bench where I can tick weld the U-bend pieces to the header. For the next step, I welded the collar to the V-band clamp on one of the straight pieces of tubing. The band clamp keeps them sealed airtight. There is no need for a gasket. The gaskets in this position is normally what fails and causes exhaust leak. The best part of all is the band clamps are reusable and make the exhaust system a simple job to pull apart and put that together. Just as long as you use high temp thread lubricant every time you reinstall the bolts on the clamp. One more quick check with the measuring tape keeps the tubing's path parallel with the frame. The same process is repeated to the passenger side to mirror the driver's side. After measuring where the muscles are going to sit, I cut off the extra length of tubing from the straight pieces and weld the mufflers on. The same process was repeated on the other side to match. So it looks like everything worked out great for Peter as far as the exhaust system goes because he got everything fitted on there and also put the body on the chassis one last time before he pulled everything apart and sent the chassis out for powder and the exhaust system out for Cerakote. So what is Cerakote? Well, it's a polymer-based ceramic coating that can be applied to almost anything, including wood, plastics, and even in our case, the stainless exhaust kit for Peter's truck. Now, I know that you're asking why coat a stainless steel exhaust system. Well, it's pretty straightforward. As Cerico was designed to resist any damage caused by abrasion or caustic properties, it's also very resistant to chemical products and super strong, so it won't scratch or peel off. There are two different formulas to choose from based on the equipment of the user. The formula we chose was applied after the parts were thoroughly cleaned and sandblasted. Then our local powder coater sprayed the Cerakote over all the parts with three passes to ensure even coverage. We went for the air dry formula, which can take up to five days to cure, but our powder coater shared with us a little secret by putting the parts in their oven overnight at around 200 degrees. That way everything was cured and ready to use the next day. Man, I'm super pumped to get the chassis exhaust back from the coater. I couldn't wait to get the engine back into the chassis. But most of all, what really made me excited was how good the titanium Cerakote coating looked on all the exhaust parts. Now putting it back together should really be simple with the help of the V-band clamps and billet hangers. So I got another call from Peter and I think I'm really missing out on this whole thing because he told me he got everything back from powder coat and he got the exhaust system back from Cerakote. Plus the LS motor that he put together is all ready to go and really it seems like this thing is ready to be put together. So I'm gonna take a little road trip up to Fresno, which is about four and a half hours away for me to drive my car up to, but I'm really excited about going there because I can't wait to see how everything came out, and I really wanna get this project on the road as quickly as possible. Hey, what are you guys doing? Oh, just putting the rear end back together, okay. getting it all set up, getting ready to put the exhaust on. Oh, serious? You got here just in time. We just got all the exhaust back from Cerakote. Looks nice. Yep. We got uh, deeds brackets. Okay. We just just finished putting them on. Right. With the has deeds uh, band clamps on everything. Right. From deeds performance. Okay. Um, Magnaflow. These are the uh, tips we got from Magnaflow. The Corvette tips, which will come out right here. Right. And because this has basically a Corvette motor, Corvette front and rear suspension, we thought it would tie the whole thing together. Oh, that's cool. Right on. Well, you did a lot since we talked on the phone because it looked like Magnaflow got that kit sent up to you and Deed's got everything up here. Like, you put the whole thing together, huh? It's working, man. Super Peter. <laughs> well, well, let's quit screwing around and put the thing together. We're ready. All right. It's waiting on you. Putting the exhaust back in the chassis was a breeze for Keith and Peter. They simply lined up the Deed's V-band flanges and secured them with the V-band's clamp. With the front section of the exhaust held in place by the V-band clamps, the guys split open the exhaust hanger to allow the exhaust tubing to sit in there tight before they tighten it up. Then they finish it off by threading the clamp to the tab that Peter welded into the frame to hang on to the clamp. After all the hangers and V-bands are set in position, Peter double-checked the fasteners to make sure that everything was on there tight. That really sealed the deal, as this collector will never have a chance of leaking. When Peter got the kit from Magnaflow, he noticed that he could separate the exhaust system into two separate parts, allowing for a serviceable system that could be round underneath the exhaust suspension. This is where the V-band clamps from Deeds really made this idea into a reality. Here's a closer look at the tailpipe section of the Magnaflow exhaust, as well as the billet hangers and V-band clamps that we picked up from Deeds. And how do you finish off an awesome looking exhaust system like this one? Well, we do it with a set of polished stainless steel tips from Magnaflow exhaust. 
I'm really happy with how the whole exhaust system came out on the truck. Even from the start, the headers from Hooker went right on and fit the engine like a glove. Then Magnaflow's custom kit had everything that I needed to run the exhaust all the way to the back of the truck in one box. The band clamps and billet exhaust hangers from Deeds Engineering made it simple to assemble the exhaust while allowing us to service the truck suspension if needed while offering a leak-free connection. Finally, I can't say enough about the titanium color of the Cerakote coating. It really sets off the exhaust with this chassis. I'm really proud of how this project is coming together.